Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another mini PC on the desk today. This is the B-Link AP42. This has a, a new Apollo Lake processor, very similar to the Intel NUC and the Voyo that we looked at a couple of weeks ago that you can find down below in the video description. We're going to see how this one stacks up uh, with those similar mini PCs, and this costs about uh, $200 or less, depending on what sales might be going on right now. I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from GearBest.com. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's step through the hardware. On first glance, it looks a lot like that Voyo mini PC we looked at. It's also made out of aluminum. It's got a similar look to it, but this one is fanless. It relies on passive cooling, and it has Wi-Fi built in that that Voyo did not have. You got an external antenna here also, so it supports AC wireless. This has the Intel N4200 quad-core Apollo Lake processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage. The RAM is not upgradable, but the storage is. It has an M2 SATA port inside of it that you can put in one of those little M2 drives if you wish. But I did find it very difficult to take this thing apart. In fact, I was uh, afraid to do so because I felt like I was going to break something as I was getting into it. But you can, if you can get in there, uh, replace the uh, SSD if you wish for more storage. So that was good to see, but you're locked in with the RAM. On the back here, you've got your headphone jack there. There's a reset button, I'm assuming, for resetting uh, its uh, internal settings of some kind. Maybe it's by uh, your LAN port is here for gigabit Ethernet, HDMI out. It supports 4K at uh, 30 hertz at the max, but it did support, to my surprise, uh, 1080p at 120 hertz on my gaming monitor over there. So it does have uh, some degree of flexibility on your, eight, on your 1080p out, including uh, going past 60 hertz. USB 3 port here, your power goes in there, your power switch is on that side. On the other side here, you've got a SD card slot for popping in SD cards. So I'll take my 128 megabyte card and pop it in here. It does stick out a bit, but you do have that uh, card slot as an option for your cameras and media and whatnot. Two more USB 3.0 ports there, and that is it. And again, uh, keep these vents clear because it relies on uh, passive airflow going through to keep it all cool. And we'll talk more about thermals when we boot it up, which is going to happen right now. All right, so now we are up and running, and one of the nice things about this device was that it did not have some pre-installed administrator account on the Windows installation, so it actually took you through the proper procedure to get Windows up and running. It didn't have any software on here that I didn't want, uh, so that was a very good sign. We've seen this on other uh, Chinese mini PCs as they often uh, put on some administrator account that has access to stuff that I wasn't that comfortable with. In fact, usually I was re basically wiping out the computers and reinstalling Windows myself. Didn't need to do that with this one because it was running through the proper uh, onboarding procedure for a Windows installation. So that was a very big improvement. Uh, the copy of Windows Onboard is Windows Home Edition, and it is fully activated. Performance is great on this, as I would expect it to be with these new chips. Uh, no drop frames on uh, the 1080p60 video I'm running here. Well, maybe one drop frame, but I think it was just when it was getting started up. So no issues with Netflix and other things you might want to watch on the web, including uh, YouTube videos like the one you're watching now. Web browsing is also pretty efficient on here also like other Apollo Lake chips in this generation. I really like uh, how fast these little chips are for doing this kind of casual stuff. So we can pop around the different articles here. It's snappy, it performs well, and if you don't have too many things uh, loaded up in the background, I think you'll be very pleased and surprised by how nice a job this does browsing the web. And on the Octane Web Benchmark test, we got a score of 11,752, which puts it right in line with other devices powered by similar Apollo Lake processors like that Voyo Mini V1 as well as the Intel NUC. So good performance there as expected, which is always a good thing. It also does very well with word processing documents like uh, this one here, this newsletter template running in Microsoft Word. It very quickly responds to changes here. And again, any kind of casual task that doesn't involve playing games, I think will do quite well on this thing. And you'll be surprised actually by uh, how much these little mini PCs have improved over the last year or so if you had one from a couple of years ago. Let's take a look now and see how it does gaming, which is not as good as some of the other stuff you just saw. All right, so let's kick things off with Minecraft, and we're only seeing about frame rates around 25 to 30 frames per second, and that is with the Optifine performance enhancing plugin uh, installed here. So not the best if you're looking for a little mini Minecraft workstation, but uh, certainly playable. I think you'll see a little better performance out of the Windows 10 edition of Minecraft 
aircraft, but not all of the modifications for uh, this version are compatible with that one. So not so great here. Let's take a look at something else. All right, so let's take a look now at Rocket League. And what I've done here is turned all the settings down on this to get uh, the best possible experience we can. And one of the things I've noticed with these newer Apollo Lake chips is that they actually do perform a little better than prior mini PCs. So we're getting about 25 to uh, 30 frames per second, uh, usually in the uh, mid to high 20s here. So still not quite a uh, fluid experience, not as good as your PlayStation might be, for example, but uh, we're getting there on mini PCs. Now, one thing of note on this particular device is that the memory is set up in single channel configuration, which means that uh, we're not seeing the benefit of having dual channel memory that we've seen on some of these other mini PCs, namely that uh, Intel NUC. They had a pretty decent performance boost in this game and many others when uh, we did have two RAM modules installed. So you're getting a little bit of a performance hit here. It's also getting hit by its uh, thermal design. Because there is no fan to actively cool the chip off, it will slow down the hotter it gets. And I ran uh, the 3D Mark stress test earlier, and it didn't quite get through that test with flying colors. We got about 91.9% on that one, which means that over time it will slow down a bit to adjust for its uh, rise in temperature levels. So that is something to keep in mind when you're thinking about gaming on this device. But on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 2,260, which puts it right in line with the Voyo V1 mini PC that's configured with a single channel uh, of RAM as well. So pretty similar performance, about what we'd expect it to be at. But do take a look at the Intel NUC. You can see, though, the difference between single channel RAM, where that device performs pretty close to uh, where these are on the frames per second, to when you add that second channel of memory, uh, you get a pretty decent bump in overall performance. Still not enough to make it a gaming PC, but enough to improve the uh, performance of the graphics process processor built in. So it's a bit hindered by its thermals and by its lack of dual channel memory. But I have found these little PCs do very well as in-home game streaming devices. So if you have a more powerful PC in the other room, uh, you can stream your games to this one, maybe to a living room TV or something, and get a really decent performance. Because these boxes are really well suited for video streaming, and that is really, in essence, what you're doing uh, when you're doing in-home game streaming. So you can have your more powerful PC essentially act as a game server for this little one, and it's a very nice experience. You get uh, decent frame rates, great image quality, and if you're hooked up via Ethernet, you'll also have some uh, really reliable uh, connection of that stream as it's going across. So really good stuff and definitely worth considering. Uh, some games that do run on this are older games from like 10 years ago or so. I've also had some pretty decent luck with things like Shovel Knight and some of the other indie games that are not all that demanding on hardware. All right, so let's take a look now at Kodi performance and how well it performs as a home theater box. And I was able to get my Blu-ray MKV running just fine at 24p. It actually upconverted to 4K for me at 24p. It also worked with lossless audio formats too, so DTS HD and Dolby True HD worked. I did find the display looked a little washed out, so I might have to adjust some of those settings in the uh, Intel graphics settings to get a slightly better image out of it. But uh, by and large, it was a silent, uh, pretty decent little home theater box that supported all the things that I wanted to support, which was good. I was also able to test some of these 10-bit HEVC files that a lot of you are interested in. So this is a uh, kind of a Blu-ray equivalent file at 10-bit, uh, 60 megabits per second. Perfect playback here at 30 frames per second. No issues there. Uh, one skip frame, but uh, by and large, it's been performing well as I've been playing back this stuff. It's also able to handle the larger 140 megabit 4K 10-bit uh, HEVC file here. It's getting complicated uh, reporting on home theater lately with all these different formats. But uh, this one plays okay at 1080. I did not have the same kind of luck playing back at 4K. I might continue testing it, but I think uh, 1080p output is kind of the sweet spot on this device or uh, playing back 1080p files at uh, 4K. Just remember, you can't do 60 hertz 4K playback on this one. But overall, I think it's a pretty nice little box. Now, one thing I like to always remind people about is that when you do buy one of these Chinese brands, they do not have the support structure that name brands have. So in many ways, this is kind of a buy at your own risk kind of endeavor where I think GearBest might be able to help you out in the early days after the sale, but if something happens a year from now, you may not get support from B-Link if, if this device ever goes down on you. So I don't often recommend these as uh, primary computers, but they're nice, uh, fun little toys to have as a supplement. So just keep that in mind. I'm not always that confident that these companies can deliver the support that a lot of folks might want to see, but you're not paying all that much either. You know, For about 200 bucks or less, depending on what sales are going on, uh, you can get a full-fledged Windows PC here that uh, doesn't come with a lot of aggravation and actually performs pretty nicely. This is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters.
If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.